true hyponatremia is when you have a low serum sodium concentration along with low osmolality and low tonicity. This causes water to move into the cells. That sodium is osmotically active. You get a relatively higher concentration inside the cells, and so you get water movement into the cells. Hyponatremia is due to more water intake than excretion. As long as water intake equals water out, sodium remains in balance. If fluid intake exceeds urine output, sodium falls. This can occur in three different scenarios. One, renal failure. No urine output, you're always going to have more intake than excretion. Obsessive water drinking. Just drinking so much that even healthy kidneys can't keep up. And lastly, normal water intake with low urine output, but not renal failure. Here is a summary of what we just described. No urine output with normal water intake is renal failure. Normal water intake with decreased urine output is the last one we described and then compulsive water drinking with maximal but still inadequate urine output. Let's look at the first one. This happens with dialysis or end-stage renal disease. Anything which prevents the patient from making urine predisposes them to hyponatremia. They're naturally going to drink more water than they can excrete. The next one we're going to talk about is the last one on the list, compulsive water drinking with maximal but inadequate urine output. These are tragic situations in which people just have compulsive water drinking. People with schizophrenia are predisposed to this. It may be, in some degree, due to the anticholinergic drugs they take, increasing thirst. But then the other ones are just games people play. Here's some headlines of people that have died from acute water intoxication. This is all due to cerebral edema associated with hyponatremia. You need to drink an incredible amount of water to get these symptoms. 18 liters is the maximum daily urine output. So you're looking at 9 2-liter bottles a day to cause this type of hyponatremia. So we've gone over no urine output with normal water intake and compulsive water drinking with maximal but inadequate urine output. And we've left this middle one for future chapters. This middle one is the real big sweet spot in hyponatremia.